this is Strange Love After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. And as always, I'm joined by the ham behind the desk, Dr. Normal. Hey, everybody. Oh, I was supposed to wear the hat. (laughs) As I commented earlier, this looks like the Drudge Report, right? (laughs) Let's get some birthers in here or something. He wanted some camera time. I I need some camera time. (laughs) I didn't have any time. I don't really think you get to talk to people during the tech edition. I I just don't see your value. I used to. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just I just don't think that you have a lot of value during the tech edition. I don't add a lot of value, huh? All right. Well, not we'll, during the we'll tech edition. Later. I mean, you're fun and quirky at, in the after hours, but <laughs> I'm fun and quirky <laughs> in after hours in after and hours. in other I'm just places. Gonna, this is going to be the show. This is going to be after hours. I'm going to repeat everything um, you say. So well, I was going to introduce yes. our guest. So, would you like to do that? Would you like to introduce our guest? You never get to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually going to introduce our guest. Okay. Introduce our guest. Okay. Do it. Here goes. I've been working on this, so (laughs) bear with me. (laughs) Todd couldn't be here tonight. Filling in is Chris Matthews of MSNBC. Chris, do you have a question for Rick Trosi, the Silicon Florist? Why do I let him do these things? (laughs) Why? Rick Trosley of the Silicon Floors, you posted a post about uh, Portland being the most entrepreneurial town uh, with 9.5% unemployment and no VC capital to uh, speak of. Are you on drugs or something? Go! As I'm drinking alcohol? No. I love after the question what kind of drugs are you taking well it is I, I mean honestly when you think about it that's that's how you introduce our guest hi um <laughs> <laughs> wait 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 i gotta fix something here we have a problem it's the birthday episode oh yeah thank you at my house nice oh, oh thank you <laughs> thank you honey at my house Great. we wear tiaras for our birthday so there you go good <laughs> Now. Let me see. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, you look pretty. Yeah. Excellent. It's good. It looks good on you. Okay, now you can answer the question. Okay, so the, the, boy. the <laughs> wait a minute, Kelly, did it work? Okay. <laughs> it's audience of one. I can't uh, read. You tell me. <laughs> the uh, entrepreneurial <laughs> post. The, um, he says with a tiara on his head. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm so serious. The. <laughs> Really, the focus of the, yes, please. The <laughs> focus of that was not about whether uh, Portland had a successful business. I can't get over the Terry. <laughs> Ter- what? Whatever that tiara. thing is you got on your head. You're this is how I answer oh, all my serious questions with the tiara That's the on my head. Answer. This is actually how I composed the post. Yeah. Wait, what so color what is, is the tiara? tiara on my head and a tutu. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Do you have the tiara of truth? I do. Of a thousand truths. Um, <laughs> the focus on that was more, and I think, you know, to some extent the point um, may have been a little muddled because of the tiara. Because of the tiara. <laughs> Because of yeah, the, the tiara. because of the article was focused on um, whether whether Portland was friendly to entrepreneurs mm-hmm. and and where the the tech reporters kind of took it was well it may be friendly but there's not a lot of successful IPOs you don't see a lot of funding and where I kind of was trying to take it back was that. Um, there's just an entrepreneurial spirit that kind of pervades Portland. And I was trying to show examples of how that happens. You know, craft brewing, uh, food carts, um, you know, the art scene, the indie music scene, the bloggers, you know, there are all these kind of things where people try and express that kind of spirit or like pursue side projects or do that kind of thing. And I see, I mean, there's just a ton of that happening in Portland. And I've been a lot of places and I don't, I see it like, 
obviously San Jose, the Bay Area, like people are very focused on tech pursuits and being entrepreneurial in that regard. And there's some great restaurants there. And but they're not really following their bliss so much as they're doing something that's going to work. Right. It's business oriented yeah. and they want funding for it and, and it's going to become something big. And, um, you know, I was struggling for some for some analogy to equate it to. I never really came up with anything other than, you know, like it's just that that kind of pioneering spirit, like the idea to try something. Um, you know, the first people who set the first people who settled in Oregon probably weren't terribly successful either, but they had a pioneering. They probably died. Uh, exactly, they're dead <laughs> now. How did that help them? So they, you know, they had this kind of pioneering. Not on- too entrepreneurial. <laughs> <I see. laughs> yeah. They're not entrepreneurial. They failed. But the- this is depressing. I say we yeah. have a party. Maybe we, we should move on. Yes. Is that, yeah. yeah, no, it really is a popper. All right. Can we do poppers oh, now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, we are not allowed to sing happy birthday to the Silicon Florist because um, legal there's some legal issue involved with us having to pay a lot of money. So instead, we're going to set off party poppers. Who does do have pyrotechnics? Oh, yeah. yeah, that was nice. Mine's still smoking. Minimal yeah. awesome. pyrotechnics, remember. Um, I'm thinking somebody's oh, yeah, gonna have to go good. upstairs. Kelly, I, I want it. We maybe should have warned the person upstairs. <laughs> it's a small it person. Party poppers. Oh lord. I'm um, so. So you've got roses. Died. You've what? got roses. You've got cake. You've yeah. got a tiara. Yeah. This you've got a birthday honor. card too. Tiki there. Thing? I do. Yeah, you should open your birthday card. Uh, I don't want to get all teary in front of people. Mm, you should open your birthday card. All right. As, uh, I'm showing the entrepreneur post. Oh, good. I just wait, can't wait to see someone pick the video up and say, okay, well, you know. That only got two comments. Rick on, on the, Why don't you open the pie post and see how many rude comments are on there? <laughs> oh, uh, hi. Sorry. That's very nice. Yeah. Are you crying now? I am. I'm oh, kind of misty. Tell it with. What? Do you want me to no. read the card yeah, to the yeah, people? Yeah, somebody read the damn card. Uh, do you think I wrote something special in it? It's very Where's nice. The... Oh. Where's the... Uh, what, oh, there you go. Perfect, perfect. There you go. Nice. You there are too, too fun. fun. There you go. <laughs> and then on the inside it says... Everybody's talking about how cool you are. <laughs> mm-hmm. Happy birthday. And I have to tell you that Strange of Live and the Silicon yeah. Florist, we love each other. We do. There's a lot of, I mean, There's I don't like Rick and he doesn't like me and yeah. no one likes Dr. Normal. <laughs> But conceptually, <laughs> but, wait a minute, I can do the Chris Matthews again but, if you But like. no, but Strange Love Live loves the Silicon Florist. And if, if the Silicon Florist's posts are any William indication, the, the Silicon Florist loves Strange Love Live. Absolutely. Can you, take requests, Dr. Norman? Can you do Will Shatner? Oh, no, no, uh, no, Shat- no, no Shatner. He's not allowed to do Shatner on the show. I, I, it's one. <laughs> Jimmy Cagney? You no, know, I just got, a, got one. Just a bad Chris Matthews. <laughs> yeah, just, just a bad. Yeah, bad. Oh, that was good. Just a bad. It was pretty good. I think, as far as Doctor Normal's impressions go, that was a pretty good one. Still, Catherine Hepburn's my favorite by far. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but Plurk is. I mean. Oh God, please. Does Plurk exist? Did it die? No, I think it's still around. Yeah. It's got. Does time still move to the left? Yeah. (laughs) It's got strong following. Really surreal for me. I mean, I, I. it's not right, but it's not. Kind of like you wearing a tiara. What's not tiara right about that? Is not right. If wearing a tiara is wrong, I don't want to be right. <laughs> nice. This is some Silicon good florist. stuff. <laughs> so I think what we want to discuss now is merchandising. Oh. Merchandising. Seriously, merchandising. Okay. You've got stickers. Yeah. You got buttons. Yes. What else? Is that it? That's uh, that's it. For now, for tchotchke kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Why? Do you have an idea? No. No, I'm just wondering why it is that we take these side projects that make us no money yeah. and spend money doing merchandising for them. Because we do it too. I mean, we've got we've got buttons and stickers. I've got a great idea. We've got some what? awesome postcards Chris too. Chris Matthews of MSNBC and why don't you use that know. fancy Portland incubator experiment project to figure out some tchotchke merchandising. Excellent. That was a terrible Chris yeah. Matthews. That, that might work. Yeah. 
No, j- actually, that's what pie could be. It could be a tchotchke merchandise. Tchotchke I like place. it. <laughs> Potentially, that'll make some money. Uh, Jake Kuramoto actually had a really good idea. He thought I should sell T-shirts that were like actually the long sleeve. You should under the, under the short sleeve. And Didn't a bunch of people dress up like you for Halloween? Yeah. Yeah. What is up with that? I don't know. Nope. And Don P. Don P. was a zombie Rick for That's Halloween. That's awesome. Yeah. There's nothing cooler than a zombie Rick Tarosi. No one dresses up like me for Halloween. Yeah. Yeah, maybe this year, yeah, yeah so that doesn't sad. make sense. Well, you're a big celebrity when they really start talking to you. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah right. I need. <laughs> if you want to impress me, you can dress up like me for Halloween. <laughs> yeah, maybe behind the Just meeting. saying. Whatever. Please don't. Yeah. I wouldn't be. I don't think. I think it would scare me. Yeah, it was kind of weird. It might scare me a yeah, little. Yeah, it's a little scary. But, but there'd be a lot of markers involved, I think. <laughs> And a but lot of I, I black. think we're missing the critical story, and that is, uh, you know, wh- wh- where'd you pick up that style, that sense of fashion? I, yeah. <laughs> is that Idaho? Or? <laughs> it was probably actually Idaho. I have no idea why I do it. Like, it, I just done, done it for what a What about when it was like 107? When it was 107? When it was 107, did you have two t shirts? I did have t shirts on, probably. When it was 107? Sure. I mean, it wasn't a long sleeve. Did you leave the house? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I sure. was nude. I wore I wore a tank top and underwear. <laughs> I don't need and then to I had to shave. I did. Because I was too hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wore a tank top and underwear when it was 107. And then we recorded an episode of Strange of Live. Mm-hmm. And I had to put a dress on. And I was really surly about it. I yeah. was really surly. I was like, I hope you know I got dressed for you. And then, you know, it was all like, you didn't have to put clothing on for me. Actually, they didn't say that. They were like, God damn, thank you. What were you all wearing under those dresses during that hundred and some odd? Yeah, that was hot. And now it's freezing again. It's not freezing. It's nice out there. It is nice. It's it's happy Portland weather. Should we it's the talk weirdest drinks? summer ever. Sure, we haven't time? had drink right. music in a while. No. And we've got we've got you know two thirds of the. No, do we have the full drink music uh, making crew in the studio tonight? Uh, potentially we do. Uh, let me uh, just get. So what are we? What are we, what are we drinking? Is the drink music on? The drink music is on. Okay, we can't hear it. So I know that. What um, are we drinking? We're drinking tiki drinks. Um, they contain fresh squeezed mini oranges, uh, cran raspberry juice, pineapple rum, banana rum, coconut rum, raspberry rum, and dark rum. Very nice, very nice. And Rick is drinking the, the same, same thing. Same, yeah. As is the studio audience. And let's go to the studio audience tonight. Hello, studio audience. Hi. Hello, everyone out there on Radio Land. Do you all remember John? He's been on the show before. We do have a mic. And this is the lovely Hilda. Hi, everybody. So they are also drinking this, and this is uh, the lovely drink music is, oh, man, she's really got it. Yeah. It sounds great. All right. All right, Rick, what did we not cover? Yeah, Kelly's here. She's AWOL. She's uh, She's on taut duty. Somebody has to be on, on duty. Yeah. She's yeah. on duty? She's on kid duty. duty. Kid I said duty. Todd, but oh. she's Tot. on duty. Todd duty. Yeah. Todd. Mm. Todd just sounded nicer. Made me think of tater tots. Okay, well, we've got 45 minutes to kill. Oh, boy. Go. Is it not over? All right. <laughs> so... We can talk more about beer and blog. I oh, like those kissers. I like, I like the beer and blog. The kissers are nice. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. Oh, God. They do What's good on your stuff. mind? Yeah. Uh, nothing. Hey, what what is up with Portland on fire? What? Didn't we? Have to <laughs> Not to my satisfaction. Nothing. Nothing. Like I, I horrible fail. Like I need to get. Why don't it you going get someone again. else to do Portland on fire? So, like, I, can't you get an intern or something? Oh no, you don't have an office. I don't have. But an Pi, office. Pi, couldn't you get an intern that reports to Pi? Maybe Pi needs some interns. And then, and then the Pi person could do Portland on fire. I'll be really honest. I have a hard time asking. People to do stuff for free. Like yeah. if I want to do that, fine. Yeah. But um, that's my problem. And if I um, 
I would if I was going to have somebody else do that, I'd want to pay them. Yeah, that's part of the problem. I don't like it either. Yeah, and people come up like, like, well, like Stephen Walling's a good example. He's like, I've got this idea. I'm Mm -hmm. like, great, I'd love to help however I can, but hey, Stephen Walling, why don't you work on Portland? On maybe he should. And and there's some other folks. Um, Brom Patoyo just said he'll work on Portland. All right. right. See, this is what Strange of Life is good for. We get people to do things for free for you. People together, yeah. And uh, Chase Reeves has also mentioned that he would do some work. I don't think I know Chase. He um. He's a new uh, hire at um, Interazi. Oh. So. oh. Hi, Pete. Okay. Good old Pete. <sighs> Maybe we should do some more Chris Matthews. What? I don't know. Yeah, I think you should. Yeah. <laughs> John wants no, Mike like, to do right? more Chris I Matthews. Like yeah. Like an easy laugh. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, what go we ahead. do. I was all, you know, at the end of the tech episode, I was like, shit, we have so much more to talk about right now. And now we're dead. And now we're just like... Hey. Yeah. How you doing? Well, and I was like, I'm talking too much. I should save some of this for later, and now I don't even know. What we're... I'm going to dial up tech meme and see what's going on. Yeah, what's going on on tech meme? <laughs> so I hey, I have a question for you. All right. Do you think that cussing, I can't remember the exact number, do you think that having 13 oh. tweets that contained an obscenity should qualify me from my, like, 13,000 tweets? Mm-hmm. Should qualify me to have uh, cussed like a Scottish comedian? <coughs> No. Apparently, I have a really foul mouth. 13 tweets I've used an obscenity in. I can't believe, frankly, that it's that few. 13 out of 13,000? Yeah. That's that seems really much. low. Is 13,000 really? Could someone, could someone check my... Thousand tweets, you say something. Could someone check my Twitter stream and tell me how many tweets I have? Just, I'm curious. Just... In case, uh, I don't know, in case Rick didn't notice, uh, Twitter went down for about 24 hours. What? Was, 24 uh, hours? It was not 24 uh, hours. DDoS attack. Um, it's it was, it was like happens. two hours. Well, that was my that was my initial reaction. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah kids are out of school. Right? Yeah. I woke up summer. and I was Death disturbed Con. because I was awake and Twitter wasn't up. And yeah. that's not like Twitter. It's yeah. always there for me. But it wasn't 24 hours. Dr. Normal is mistaken. Also, Facebook and... Um, the Some Google, Google stuff. The Google uh, <laughs> blog pages. Uh-huh. Blogger? Which I used to use, Rick so acts, I shouldn't have any longer. Rick acts surprised. Acts? He acts surprised? I, I get, I'm having problems with vowels tonight. Read right web. I can say it. Nice. Yeah, acts. Read right web. Acts. I have the headphones on delay, questions. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So what well, else? There, well, uh, okay. So, what? well, am I supposed to be prepared to talk to you or something? No, no, I have something because oh, he's here, got here's something. the deal. And and um, let me uh, so much let me just turn the camera on myself because I can. Um, so here's the deal. Okay. Twitter was borked, and we went to this pie thing on Thursday night, <laughs> and the first thing. I was talking to pie some is not yummy in this instance. It's yeah, different. Anyway, so so and I said we need a backup plan. We need like in Portland, we need like a emergency bomb shelter type messaging system that if something happens. Uh, are you aware that Twitter's not the only? I know, but I always forget my logins and crap. I'm like, oh, what's my identity? Why don't you just make the identical login remember. the same as the Twitter login? I don't. I don't know. Is it open ID? I have yeah, no clue. it'll take open ID. That was a good plan. I don't understand. Identica really? could be used in the case of an emergency. I don't know. Yeah. It actually sounds like I don't know. I think this is cruel to Evan, who we've had on the show, yeah. to, to be like, I can't remember my Identica login. Well, I mean, I eventually... Not that I can remember I my Identica remember login, because I don't really yeah, well, I eventually remember it, but, you I'm know, sure they have something to help you if you forget your know. password. And Don Park had a, at one time, had a, one exactly. of the federated servers mm-hmm. running, so mm-hmm. you could... Maybe we could just put the uh, bomb shelter sign somewhere in a corner over there at the incubator, and then if Twitter goes down, we all <laughs> run on the in- incubator and just... Sort yeah. Is it really there. warm in there? It is. They're <laughs> chicks... Little fuzzy. You know, I had an chicks. incubator when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. An, incubator, an incubator. That's chicks. what you do with <laughs> chicken eggs. <laughs> Ding bat. Dude, chicks. <laughs> you almost had a spit take there, but that <laughs> but he wasn't on camera. Yeah, likely, that would have been. Where there's chicks down. It would not yeah. have been a pretty sight. I think we should discuss. What? <laughs> I don't know. I just feel compelled to stare at you until you start making sense. 
Uh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> we, we may have found a way to spend <laughs> to the rest get of the me time. Not to talk. <laughs> Minutes. I think we should talk about what's coming up in the tech community in Portland. Oh, that's a good With idea. With the tiara on. Yeah. The important stuff that I can He's got hands. He knows how to take a tiara off tiara. if he wants to. I kind of like it. See? Leave Where are his hands? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, what is that? He's, a, he's wrong this evening. Uh, you know, okay, important. tell him his supercomputing thing's coming up. And oh, hey, Dr. That. Normal, your supercomputing thing is coming up. We'll discuss your supercomputing world. There we go. There, see? Hey, that's a big show. I'm oh, telling you. Okay, what's the next big happening? Uh, WordCamp. Well, we can't talk about WordCamp because we're going to talk about that for an hour. Let's talk about it right now. Um, I mean, you could talk about, let's see, we could talk about, I'm going to talk at WordCamp. Yes. I'm not. I came up with the most inappropriate title that I could. Yeah, you did a really good job there. Thank you. I I was proud of the inappropriateness of my title. Yeah. Um, Dr. Normal, what is the title of of the talk? Beard. I I don't know. Beer podcast Dom. Dom, not not at sub. sub. Something like that. Yeah. 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 Something like that. What's it about? I'm excited. WordCamp. Oh. WordCamp has a new logo. It's pretty. Yeah, it's nice. Brosh did it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um... What else is coming? Well, Where Camp, they're working on the planning for Can Where Can you camp. tell me, what, Where Camp, is that the locational camp? Yeah, so okay. like the geo geek At stuff. first, I thought it was like Werewolf Camp, and I was like, that is it. We have too many camps. Oh my goodness, that would be an awesome camp. I know, Don right? Don Foster would love that one. I know, but I, I still was like, we have too many camps, but then I yeah. realized it was like, oh. Yeah, it's Where Are You, Where. Yeah. Um and what, uh, the there's now is the time when a lot of the kind of uh, angel VC events start happening too. So there's like a, angel angel venture capital. Yeah. Okay. So um, I thought there weren't any. Well, like yeah, they don't pay attention to us, but they let us have little events. The uh, <laughs> venture Oregon bum, bum, bum. <laughs> is coming. Up. The, the application just opened mm-hmm. for that, so people can present there. There's the Silicon Forest Forum, which is kind of a... Not to be uh, confused with the Silicon Forest. No, nor to be confused with the uh, Silicon Mike, Mike Rogaway's Silicon Forest yeah. blog. Um, so, th- so there's some of that stuff coming up. And then uh, there's some interesting, like, creative community events that may cross... Like, um, they're more kind of graphic design oriented, but have mm-hmm. a tech... Mm-hmm. kind of thing going on that people have begun discussing. I don't have a lot of details, but um, something exciting is supposed to be happening in the fall. What's the next big event that you're going to? Well, the next immediate event I'm going to isn't in Portland. It's it's up in Seattle. I'm going to Gnome Deck. Yeah, we don't want to limit ourselves to just Seattle right. or to just Portland. It's so okay just to talk the, about the Northwest. Yeah, yeah. and there, there are, I know there are a couple folks from from Portland or, you know, Silicon Forest area going up. I know, um, I assume Josh Bancroft is going. He usually always goes. Um, you know what happens when you assume, Rick? It makes an ass out of you and me. Yeah. Although that being said, Why I'm would sure. I make an ass? Oh, <laughs> I'm sure Josh is probably going. Right. Though. That's okay. Well, um, uh, <laughs> guess you need the drums. Um, yeah, exactly. But um, Marshall, <laughs> Marshall's going, uh, Jason Harris, um, and I'm sure somebody else that I'm spacing, but there's a there's usually a small contingent. Little Portland party. But Portland. Speaking of Pete, like uh, Pete, Pete and a couple of the Iterasi folks were up there last year, but he won't be going this year because I believe his daughter is getting married at exactly the same time. So. Wow. Oh yeah. That's that's a <laughs> worthy reason. Random trivial fact. But, to miss uh, and you. Let's talk about worthy reasons to miss things. You missed. You finally missed an ignite. I did. Yeah, kind of made me sad. You had the best reason ever to miss Ignite. I know it was my wife's 40th birthday. Your beautiful wife's 40th birthday. <laughs> and, uh, like, along somewhere along the lines in the planning, and mm-hmm. this is how, like, destined for sainthood my wife is. She's like, well, you know, we could go to Ignite. I'm like, you need to shut up. We do, we don't need to go to Ignite on your birthday. She's like, well, it wouldn't be that big a deal. We could just go and do this. So, yeah, that's why yeah. I wasn't there. Sainthood. Yeah. That's yeah, true. She's a good one, that one. That she, she wanted to go and hang out with us, you know. She we did. We weren't she there. Didn't, yeah, she said, maybe she said I could go to Ignite, for my, that she could go to Ignite and for her birthday. And I wasn't really, cl- yeah, take yeah. care of the kids. I don't really remember. But, yeah, that's why I missed that one. And, um... 
both. I had no such good excuse. My wife was not turning 40. Yeah. I had no, I just uh, needed to be home. Well, it's kind of like, after having been to every single one, mm-hmm. it was kind of like this, not not for, um, not because of her birthday, but I mean, it was it was kind of a weird, like, stressful kind of thing. Did like, you watch the stream? No, because I was out and doing uh. stuff. But I, um, <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> yes, I had it. Would have been even more. I was like, yes, honey, you. 40th birthday. That's awesome. Woo! Oh, look at that presentation. No. Look, I have um, poppers. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's awesome. Oh, no, you're awesome. You're awesome. Awesome is what you are. Uh, <laughs> but I watched them. I watched a lot of them after the after the fact. Yeah, because we so. can't catch this on a replay afterwards. Right. I have to see it live. Yeah, it's not like it's not like it's the. Yeah, internet I'm in, it. I'm in the chat room, honey. For forever. Doctor Normal's in the chat room. No, I'm. No, 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 never understand. mind. Never mind. Oh, you're trying to be funny so, again. Is that so, okay, yeah, yeah, so, um, so another, <laughs> it, it, how do I, how you do I, you suck as an after hours guest. I'm horrible. <laughs> we talking no. about something serious? So yeah, no, how do I put this? Um, Splash cast. Serious. Oh. Splash, let's talk about the fact, it's, Splash cast is not our fault though, we never had anyone from Splash cast on the show. Uh, that's a good point. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Well, so the last, so we had someone from Vidupon, right. and then Vidupon, yeah, hey, 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 and then yeah. I, yeah. time before that layoffs. Yeah. So we felt really yeah. guilty when when bad things happened at Vidup. We felt like it might be a little bit our fault. Yeah, and Splashcast. I mean, Mike's been really great about it, and uh, Splashcast is kind of. Um, and when I posted on, it, I kind of mentioned this, but. When I first started consulting, mm-hmm. before I'd even started Silicon Florist or any of that stuff, um, Splashcast was a company called QMind, and they did this distance learning mm-hmm. kind of stuff, um, flash-based kind of uh, distance learning stuff. And I wound up meeting them through a common contact uh, and to do some consulting work. They were over at Portland State Business Accelerator, and... Uh, a really interesting idea, and they kind of pitched this. They're like, "We're we're not going to do distance learning anymore. We're going to try and do this kind of like broadcast video, social video thing." Mm-hmm. And we got to do. It. And uh, Alex Williams was over there um, consulting at that point in time, and um, you know, it was just kind of it was really interesting. I mean, that's another one of those where I kind of I saw the entire life of the company, yeah. and. Um, and uh, you know, but Mike, uh, I think he he's been really good about the whole thing. Like, I think he learned some valuable lessons. I think he'll make a great CEO of another company someday, yeah. Mike Berkeley. And uh, and I'm looking forward to what what they do next. I'm sure Tom Turnbull there too will wind up doing something something cool too. So let me ask you on another serious note mm-hmm. in the Portland tech scene in our uh, startup scene have we hit our high point yet are we still ramping up to something are we coming down oh uh, that's a good question i think we're uh, i don't know that portland will ever have uh like a real like explosive big company thing yeah. i think the closest you're seeing to that is jive yeah and i think you know by jive's own admittance they're running in they've hit the glass ceiling for portland you know they're having problems finding some of the executive talent they need around here um they're still very much a portland company but you've seen them open a san jose office to mm-hmm. attract more talent um i don't know that you know i, I I think a lot of people. <clears throat> I think a lot of people always look at like a Tektronix or a Nike as an example of what a Portland startup can do. Whereas I think those two organizations That's are flukes. Dream case scenario. Yeah, I think they're complete flukes for yeah. the for the culture here, and it's great that they happened. Um, you know, no doubt that Nike remains a huge part of the of the economy here. But I think looking at those as a, as examples of what could happen here. I don't know. I think we're more the we're more the R and D shop or like the think tank. Yeah. We like to like try a lot of different stuff, but when it really comes to like creating a business out of it, and if you want it to be a big business, 
like if like if you're if you if you're like Jive and and you want it to be a big thing, like you know Portland, there's a there's a ceiling there, yeah. and, and they could probably pull it off. Um, I mean, they're they've got good technology, they've got a lot of good um, execs, and they're funded. But it's I mean it's hard to say because so, I think so. Uh, by that, it seems like you're saying you could see them moving on. Potentially, I could see I could see Portland being For Portland growth. Portland proper like could be an incubator period. Like yeah. I mean, you could you could see us coming up with tons of really good ideas mm-hmm. and creating very viable companies that support twenty to two hundred employees very easily, and those people could be very successful. But if people have the like, they want to become a thousand person company then you know you run into certain limitations in portland and and you know that might not be the best the same way we're not like a venture capital town but at the same time like you said before we had nike intel um tectronics we do have some big companies we do yeah but is it more the automatons that are working well, no, it, yeah, like him. The the mature <laughs> companies that we have, are the the big companies that we have are all are all mature. You know, yeah. like HP, IBM, Intel. HP, it's not. Yeah, I forgot HP. It's not like they're. Um, there aren't very many companies in the middle. They're like small yeah. startup companies, and then there are these big mature companies. Mm-hmm. And there's you know the ones anywhere in between are struggling, like in focus or so, like you right. know. Well, Tektronics you- was. Uh, they struggled forever with like Grass Valley and all that stuff. Yeah, but yeah. Tektronics originally was was a huge historically for Portland because mm-hmm. um, because they actually branched uh, so many people and they were really the founding father. They were the HP of right. of our area. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so many things shot off and projects and other companies uh, yep. and executives came out of the Tektronics. Incubator, yeah, and Nike essentially defined a market, yeah, right. You know, um, so I'm wondering if you think that's because uh, something I've noticed, having lived in California, mm-hmm. living here, people in California seem much more willing to give over everything and just work, hmm. um, until they can get where they need to be. I mean, sure. they seem willing to, and maybe it's the weather, maybe it's the what there is to do. I mean, in Portland, there's so much community yeah. and so much socialness happening, and then you've got the mountains and the ocean and the river, and there is so much to kind of divert your attention here. Do you think that lifestyle is part of it, that people in Portland want to have that pleasant lifestyle no. and the startup? <clears throat> Or do you think it's just... Yes and no. I mean, I think... Um, I think I mean, Dr. Normal's laughing at me. I mean, I think I see the same thing, but I think that I don't... I think there's a misconception that people in Portland don't work as hard as people in the Valley. Like, oh, no, I think they work very hard. Right, I just but think I think they work they, in different... They divert their pursuits. Right, and I think their, their, goal, their end goal is very different. Mm-hmm. Like, I think what happens in some startup communities, uh, like, I think Seattle is very good at this. I think the Valley is very good at this. There are people with a business concept, and technology is a way to fulfill that business concept. So So you're saying there are people that say, I want to make this much money, and I'm going to find this way to do it? Or they say, this is a problem that needs to be solved and this is the total available market mm-hmm. for that problem. Here's how we use technology to do that. And I think Portland has, is the converse of that in that we very much work with technology as a creative outlet. And True. every once in a while, we'll come up with something like a Caligator, where we go, oh, my God, this is the coolest thing ever. Yeah. How do we make a business out of this? But it's not. it was never intended as a business. It was intended it was just, as a, how do we solve this problem? Yeah. And and it, we come at it kind of backwards in that way. And that's why, I re- and not in a bad way, I just think that that's why I think of Portland as, like, artist commune, R&D, kind of shop because we just don't that's not how we approach the problem mm-hmm. we're tinkerers we're like we like figure this stuff out this is fun we just like to get our hands dirty we like to get our hands dirty and we need somebody to come in and say 
this is what we do with that technology. This is the this. Is, I always my analogy is we have a lot of people like mucking with adhesives, but mm-hmm. we have very few people who go. This will make a post-it note, and this will close your envelope, and this will do. You know, these are the that's products good, that that's will. That's a really good explanation. You know, and um, and there are a few people who do that. Like I, Pete Grillo is a great example. Like he's a business guy. Yes, he is. And he thinks of stuff that way. Or Ray King at About Us, like I think is mm-hmm. another one. And the I think the About Us is really interesting because you've got Ward Cunningham, you know, the father of the wiki, very open guy, you know, kind of their their technology lead, mm-hmm. and, and you combine that with Ray, who's very much a business guy, and mm-hmm. they've got a, a really interesting dynamic there, and that works, and, um, you know, uh, Jive is very similar. They're starting to bring in all this business talent to mm-hmm. kind of complement the stuff that, um, you know, Matt and Bill started with, and Dave helped help them kind of, you know, form into a company and now now they're they're kind of taking it to the next level. But for the most part, it's a lot of people, a lot of really smart people like Manhattan Project kind of stuff. Like they're doing stuff and they're like, oh my God, you're gonna make a bomb out of that? Like it's like they don't they're they're just Oh my god, weird science, we're gonna end the world. Yeah, exactly. Or wind up with <laughs> Kelly LeBrock one way or the other. Hello. But the um, oh now John Hughes. Oh, yeah. now we got to talk about John Hughes. So, Aww. yeah. So Pete Grillo has some points in the chat room. Oh yeah. Um, oh hi Pete. You know he Hello, says Pete. that in Portland people work it, in the Valley they live it. Um, that was it, the much more concise um, version of what I was trying to say. Well, it, <laughs> and he and he also said something which I don't quite understand, and maybe it's because I'm busy switching here, <laughs> but. Um, Portland suffers from a lack of commitment to only one endeavor at a time. No, I understand that completely. Well, what it's what I was been? saying earlier. It's that in Portland, we have a lot of half-ass because everyone's doing other projects. Yeah. People aren't concentrating on just one thing. What right. he's saying mm-hmm. is people aren't giving all their all to one project. They're working on this project, but then they've got this and that on the side. Yeah. And Pete, if I've misunderstood, please correct me. I but. think you're right. And, and I, you know, my comment on that is like, I've been kind of using it in reference to the blog. I have a, I have a good friend who I work with on some projects who's like, I'm using my whole ass. It's like, <laughs> that's my thing. Like, at some point, I want a project. It's no longer half ass. I'm using my whole ass on it. And yeah. the blog would be a great thing to do that with. But I think. Um, but I don't get it. People got to eat. I right, mean, but we, you, you know, you, you. Hey, you know what? Idea, we're no, no, no. we're an excellent example of half asses. You you don't think those guys who worked at Tektronics and then spun off and you know created new companies? They were working their day job and then they were working nights in the garage mm-hmm. to get out what they were doing. That's I mean, right. I I. I sort but of look disagree. at but I mean look at any like if you look at any. Pick anybody out of beer and blog, and ask them what side projects they're working on. Everybody has some. They're not. They're not. They're not saying, "Oh, I'm slogging through my day job, and then I've got this one project that I'm really excited about." We dabble. We like, you know. I, I'm another good example. I've got like two half-built technology projects. I've got like <laughs> the like two or three like my personal blog, another blog, Silicon Florist. Portland on fire, you know, all these random, like, plus the, you know, the ideas we, you know, podcast ideas that we've we've, we've talked about and that kind of thing. And, and it's that, um, nobody, uh, Pete's right. Nobody hones in on stuff. They're always hedging their bet. Yeah. It's like, I'm excited by all this stuff, but there's nothing that anybody ever takes like, and and kind of runs. So let me ask you to follow up that thought. Yep. Um, so it's uh, just a steely-eyed focus on one thing, right? Yeah. Um, camera one. Um, I was over there. I was paying attention. And, um, and yeah, I totally lost my train of steely-eyed thought. So focus steely-eyed focus on just focus one thing. On just steely one Dan. thing. And then, Ooh, and, steely Dan. And then a, maybe a killer instinct. Like, I'm going to own this space. I mean, is that... I mean, because if you look at real entrepreneurs who have made it, that's part of their DNA, yeah. right? Well, They're like, I'm going to own this, man. And yeah. anyone who so much as sniffs around me, I'm going to stomp out. Well, and I would argue even like... It, and that's I, a killer instinct. I th- There was one really good example that happened recently with, um, if you guys are familiar with Seismic. 
at all, mm -hmm. yeah, which is which is a, a Lock, basically a, uh, was a video version of Twitter, mm -hmm. kind of right. And 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 Loic Lemur, Loic Lemur was the the guy behind that, and he moved. Okay, so Loic is an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. He moved from his home in France to the Valley because he knew there would be a better opportunity to be an entrepreneur there. He chose to pursue this he was passionate about pursuing this video chat thing and then they acquired twirl which became seismic desktop kind of thing and at some point in time they decided to abandon video chat he made the decision to leave video chat behind in favor of the twitter client because there was more potential in the twitter client that would never happen in Portland. That yeah. is an entrepreneurial decision to ensure that a company survives and that investors get return on their investment. That would not happen in Portland. What would happen in Portland is we would desperately cling to video chat going, I need to find a, an application to make this work because I love we this technology. We throw our lifeblood into it. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that's less that's more a passion project, emotional tie to this creative pursuit of of dealing with technology so I, and less I about business in. entrepreneurship. So I have to jump in because we were just talking about Splashcast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to me it seems like that's exactly what Splashcast did, right? They exited certain parts of the business to focus clearly on on, on on other pieces, right? Right. And yet it wasn't successful. But it was so all how do you So how do you square that? Okay, so it was all the same since Splashcast was QMind, it was all exactly the same technology. They were searching for the right application of that technology and they never really found the hook. They found enough of a hook to get funding. But they were always still, it wasn't about the survival of Splashcast, it was about the application of this particular technology. And so, so maybe we're in incubating the wrong solution for um, a, 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 you know, a business that doesn't exist. So in other words, you know, you're, you're, I mean, the worst thing in the world is to have the right technology at the, the wrong, wrong solution. Time. Yeah, at the wrong I time, just, exactly. I have to stop. This is way too serious of a conversation to have. You know, it's TR. been going on for 40 minutes. I know, but minutes, you know so, what? It I just mean, suddenly got way too serious for right. the TR, and I, mean, I had like a flashback of someone 10 years from now watching this at the TR. Yeah. The I felt Portland a little State guilty. Technology Historical Society. I had, they have I had, I had torture guilt, okay? Are you? Torture I, guilt. I told the chat room. I told them to take it off. What the hell? Yeah, okay. It's, it's um, I think Kelly has got a burning Thanks, question. Portland. Well, uh, really he can answer that though. Okay. I mean, we were just saying, yeah, you know, wrong time. Without the TRS, trying to force the technology into a business solution <laughs> sure. rather than looking at a business problem and bringing a solution to it. Right. Well, that and that's. I think that's the. Pro that's. Not to like get all like oh Portland's the smartest city in the world about it, but I think that's oh my god Portland's so the smartest it is city. and the most entrepreneurial. And I don't know if you've creative. read the post and but, uh, and we have pie and yeah. people are better looking and uh, fit. Oh, More I thought we were, I thought we were fatter than anyone else in the no. Have you been to the Midwest? <laughs> yes. I have, but for a metropolitan like city, I think we're oh. the most overweight. Um, <laughs> Okay. The, I better hit the gym. The, I keep better uh, work a little harder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's mm. Beaver Ted. That's good. Yeah. The, um, I think that might be one of the, one of the things uh, that. So Open ID is another good example. I mean, look at look at Vadoop and and kind of where they went with that. Like they, we are so far ahead of. In terms of the bell curve, we're really kind of but bleeding. Vadoop is dead. Huh. Yeah, but it, it's not still there. Open ID though. No, not Open ID is not like there. Like Jan but... Rain, Jan Rain is doing very well. Yeah. Okay, here's a good example. Oh, great. Jan Rain is doing very well with Open ID right now because they stopped focusing on Open ID. What they do now is a login credential. So what Jan Rain provides for you now is Facebook or Open ID or Google or whatever, what have you. They've transitioned from we're beholden to Open ID as a technology to solving a problem, which is solving a business problem. So which when is, they start to drop their principles, and I, I don't mean this in a bad way, when they when they let go of that 
driving passion mm-hmm. is when they start to make a success of themselves. When they but when d- they divorce themselves from the attachment to the particular technology and address a particular business when issue. When they address the problem and not yeah. the solution. Yeah. And so like and and I like this is something that's like near and dear to my heart because the dot com I worked for back in the back in the late nineties, um that completely cratered was very much a company that was in love with its technology, but mm-hmm. just way ahead of its time. Mm-hmm. And and yet we kind of clung to this technology and the potential that that technology held and kind of ignored what else was going on in the market because we so believed that it, it was for it was for healthcare. It was an electronic medical record, and um, we so believed that this was going to revolutionize medicine, but. Even today, people aren't at the point where they readily adopt that kind of, A decade later, yeah. people still aren't at the point, physicians still aren't at the point where they adopt that kind of technology readily. Um, and so we were, we were just so far ahead of our time that there was no way we could potentially win at that. We couldn't survive long enough to make sure that, that we win there. And that's... You know, part of being forward-thinking, that's one of the dangers. It's you get so enamored with the technology, so enamored with what you're capable of producing that you lose sight of what the market will bear. Like, Twitter is a good example. Like, we were all hot on Twitter, like, a year ago. Twitter's just barely breaking the, you know... Are you, you saying know, you're not hot on Twitter now? I'm still hot on it, but what I'm saying <laughs> the is... shark. Yeah, no, but what I'm saying is, like... Jonathan yeah, yeah, thinks you're not hot anymore without the tiara. Oh, no, not as hot. Um, yeah. No, no, no. The the comment was uh, he no he no longer shines the truth. Nice, Brom Patoya. I so, took the yeah. tr. I've re- removed the tr of exactly. truth. Um, but it's a good point about Twitter. But but right. it's it's just yeah. now reaching the Britney Oprah, you know, fat of the bell curve. So it's oh, just now God. it's just now um, reaching the non tech adopters. It's just now reaching the general right. public. Right. Yeah. yeah, and your and mom's you, on Twitter now. My know. mom is not on Twitter. Well, my dad someone's is. Someone's mom is. Your <laughs> mom.com. Dad. Oh yeah, <laughs> my mom's sorry. on Facebook. Get Twitter though. off my mom. Oh, uh, that's, there's some that's, joke there. That's, uh. that's, <laughs> <laughs> no, my mom really is on Facebook. I almost had a heart attack. Nice. Seriously, I woke up one morning with a friend request ah. from my mother, and I was yeah. like, mm. yeah. "Ma." No. What? Mother-in-law is with so, the sweat. And then, uh, and then, and then I believe that Kelly very quickly got a friend request from my mother. All right. Yeah. Which I was okay with. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Portland's just a bunch of technology loving, twittering, um, Experi- like R and D experimentation. With we like technology. to have our finger in a lot of pies. Yes, so how do we, we do. make money and have a sustainable economy in Portland? In Not 140 characters. Notes. Go. Well, uh, yeah, write this down because I'll only say it once. Thank we you. do it. It's not going to play back on the internet. Right? <laughs> yeah, That's right. don't. We'll redact just, this. Yeah, just cut, the, cut, just block right here. Track <laughs> um, went down now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know exactly the way to do it. I know the way we don't do it, and the way we don't do it is by trying to recreate the Valley or Seattle or something like that. That's not right. the answer for Portland. I don't know what the right answer is. I think you know, and we. I think. Uh, We've talked about it quite a bit, you know, behind the scenes and that kind of thing. But I think Portland is very much, uh, there's some model that already exists that will work for Portland. Mm -hmm. It is, however, not the typical venture capital angel funded model. I think it's something like the artist and patron model, or it's something like the Hollywood model, where there's some kind of... Well, the problem with that is that there are starving artists all over the world, and there are far more directors and producers for movies than there are movies that the general public wants to see. Right. And that's the sad part. I am such a gloomy guy. Well, but... but, (laughs) Oh, my goodness. But on the converse, there are also people who score NEA grants who never deliver... Yeah. Oh, God. ...anything of value. So, I mean, it's like... There, there's something, there's some model mm-hmm. that will work for Portland, but I don't think, I don't think the, the traditional VC model because, not because I have anything against VCs. It's that VCs want to, want to spend a lot of money on something, and Portlanders want to take as little money as possible. So VCs yeah, they really do. VCs Ooh. keep going. They're like. I need to give you eight figures mm-hmm. 
-hmm. And Portlanders go, I only need five figures. I don't want your eight figures. And that is just, they're at cross purposes. And until we find, you know. Do you think if the Portlanders were willing to take the bigger amounts of money that we would just be way more in over our head or that we would actually be able to do something? I don't, I don't know that it would I mean, there are some Portlanders who obviously are more business oriented, would love to take larger amounts of money. I just don't think there's a, the, there's not a culture mm-hmm. of doing, I think in order to attract a lot of VC investment and, and, and kind of cultivate that whole thing, like you need everybody kind of wanting to do that. Like yeah. if you have a few one-offs who are like, like I always, you know, <laughs> Pete's a good example. You know, there's some <laughs> other people who, uh, you know, David uh, Abramowski at, at Mia Works, very business oriented kind of guy. Who they they get frustrated. They're like, you know, this is a business. How do we how do we make this into a business? And and they're outliers in this community. And in in you know, it, it, we're in the valley. They would be just like everybody Every else. So it sounds to me like uh, if you. Think about all we're talking about here. That Portland is an IP creative incubator. Yes, and not the place to take your solution to the next level. And in other words, it's a place to go for a solution. It's to a place incubate to search for answers, solution. but not necessarily the place to come up with the right one. Hmm. Is yeah. that the? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's it's all about, like, exploring stuff. So and, we're college. Well, okay, now you, get me to, now you get me to another point. It's like the the other thing about the Valley is the Valley has two incubators mm-hmm. that people pay $40,000 a year to attend. They're called Berkeley and Stanford. Mm-hmm. And people go there, and they're dorm room incubators. They mm-hmm. hang out all yeah. night. They bang on stuff. The the engineers wind up with the business people because they're both in the same dorm and they like that's the incubation that portland doesn't have we don't have anything like that so that occurs in coffee shops it occurs in co-working spaces you know we don't have a university environment like that that allows for that kind of early stage incubation and so that occurs our universities do different different things right right and so that occurs out in public and it generally occurs with much more mature people i think Mm -hmm. that's the other thing about the valley is you see people coming at either quitting college and starting at 19 or you see very young mid-20s people doing that kind of thing and in portland in portland you see that that kind of, you know, age group kind of being more in the, the late 20s, early 30s kind of people. Yeah, who add are, 10 years and see where it yeah. takes you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, it's all kinds of like, there are all kinds of aspects of, which is why I get really frustrated with people like, oh, we just need to recreate the, the valley kind of stuff. There's um, there's all kinds of cultural aspects that just don't work the same way. No Reed student is going to, like, Reed is not going to be a Berkeley. Yeah. No. No matter how hard it how hard it tries, or or University of Portland, PSU, obviously very much compu- you know commuter campus, got some technology stuff going there, but it's not not the same kind of thing. You know what I find interesting? We have a lot of technologically savvy people coming out of the Art Institute. Yeah, yeah. It's the Art Institute, but we've got all these like technologically savvy people coming right on out of there. That's another like half written blog post. Like I have thousands of half written blog posts. Mm-hmm. And there's a there used to be a day I remember Messina promoting it. There used to be a day called Finish Your Fucking Drafts Day, and it was like I need all the that yeah, day. it's all the all I the need drafts that day, you have way too many yeah that you have sitting in your blog. But one of them is um, equating what happened in the late '80s, early '90s with desktop publishing, mm-hmm. and how that really revolutionized the graphic design industry when people had access to that kind of computing power, so they could deal with. Page maker, or they could deal with you know early renditions of Photoshop, or or those kind of things, and and typography and all that kind of stuff, and how that is how that desktop publishing kind of construct is exactly the same thing that's going on with things like open source and computing power now. Like what we're doing with web apps and iPhone apps and that kind of thing is what happened with desktop publishing. And if you look at the the industry in Portland that formed around that, the graphic design industry, the marketing advertising industry, mm-hmm. there's a there's a huge wealth of knowledge of 
how to take that that access to technology and make it a viable business model. And I think um, you know Raven and James with uh, with Small Society are a really good early example of that. Mm -hmm. They're an agency. They develop applications as an agency. That's yeah. no different than somebody developing an advertising spot as an agency. And and they're just taking technology as the creative deliverable, whereas somebody else would create a brochure or create an advertisement. They're creating an application to deliver that. So I think there's some really interesting stuff going on there. Kelly? So how much of this, though, do you think has to do with the attitude in Portland that solving the problem is the fun part? People don't want to be business people here. Yeah. So in order, I think... I don't want to be a business person. Right. I just want to but I think the, the part of that that, that, that comes from that is... I almost wore a suit tonight just to throw you <laughs> Like, for example, Ward and Ray, collectively, it takes both of them. Yeah. And it's because Ward had a problem he wanted to solve. Mm -hmm. And Ray saw the business end of that. Yep. And how much of that do you think... How much of that do you think may be the model that takes Portland, that moves Portland forward? And how much of that is also going to hinge on people who are investing money, splitting the difference between... Twenty dollars at something like Kiva, you know, where you're funding a little yeah. tiny organization, or and the twenty and million dollars yeah. that you get that that a VC is willing to give you. Right. You know, I can give you two million dollars, and I remember having this conversation with Audrey about Caligator, and saying, you know, five million dollars worth of venture funding, and she said, I wouldn't know where to start with one. Right. And what if you could take? Person. What if you could take that million dollars and go? Five people have complete. Yeah. You know, you know, take a fraction of a million dollars and give five people living salaries for a year so that they can do nothing but beat on Caligator and make it something that then could later make yeah. and well, I think they'd be better off hiring one business person to get right. that all in order and then yeah. right. four people. And some people don't even know that they need a business person. They just are well, uh, so involved yes. in in Rick's trying to do this thing and I can build a thing that solves the problem that he's having. You know, I don't care if I get money for it. I just want to be able to solve the problem and have the satisfaction of knowing that I did that. I think I think the other, like, just tangential issue to that is um, force-fitting people into things that they don't necessarily, they shouldn't be doing. So, Caligator is a great example. Should Audrey be the CEO of Caligator? No, probably not. I mean, she doesn't. She, I doubt she wants to be the CEO of a Caligator, and and that trying to there's a there's a really difficult transition there where people have to make the decision between this is my thing that I created, but I need to give it to somebody. I need to hire a CEO or right. a CFO to help us like figure figure out how to run it, and that's something Portland hasn't had to go through that transition much. Right. But do you think that that's the model that that at least could sort of in beta, to so to speak, carry Portland forward? If I we think do it something could. Like I mean, I think that's kind of the artist patron model. Like it's more, it's smaller living expense kind of investments that like mm -hmm. that the people taking the investment are comfortable enough saying, yeah, that's a fine amount. Right. And um, but it's also kind of like the. It's almost kind of like you, like an artist. I mean, and granted, it, it goes all across the spectrum, so I don't mean to make a sweeping generalization, but I mean, most artists I know don't go. I'm working on this painting, and I know if I use purple here, I'll be able to use. I'll be able to sell this for two thousand dollars more than if I use green here. Right. They usually express themselves mm -hmm. and then pick a price point on it, and that's you know. It, it, people here in Portland don't tend to think in those ways. So much in the same way you would support an artist, you say, I'm going to pay your living expenses. I don't know what you're going to come up with, but I know you're going to come up with something cool. Go do that. Rather than, I'm going to invest in this particular idea. Let's see if we can bring it to fruition. So in Portland, you think people are more likely to be invested in? 
I think it's investing in people as opposed to projects. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best way to put it. It's, I appreciate your talent. I know if I put you, t- and that's why I kind of like the Hollywood model. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a, like uh, when I try and come up with an analogy for it, I don't go see a Paramount film or a Universal film. You go to I see I will the go see a Pixar film. That's about the only one I can think of where I'm like, I will go see a Pixar film. But, but right. that, that is a genre and a company in right. and of itself. So it's kind of out there, and yeah. it's, you know, but the. But yeah, edge case. But like Universal, I go see a George Clooney film or a Francis Ford Coppola film. I see based on a particular person mm-hmm. and the talent they have that I appreciate. And I think that's the model that if we start investing in people who have talent, there are going to be good things that are going to come out of that. We don't know what they are, but they're going to be. But there'll be something. But there'll be something. All right, with that. I'm going to go super cheesy and say someone should invest in the talent that is Rick Terosi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can give it to somebody with real talent. (laughs) But everybody in Portland who has a brain appreciates what you do for us. We all love the Silicon Florist, and I'm not just saying that because it's your second birthday. We really do, and you do great things for the tech community in Portland. Thank you. And now we need to say goodnight to everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Next week, we'll be talking to Aaron Hockley about WordCamp. And it's going to be a good show, too. Thank you, Rick.